Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again with a hardware review. And I love hardware reviews. I mean, what technologist doesn't enjoy playing with gadgets? Any opportunity I get to check out a new computer of any kind is always a great day for me. And what I have in front of me right now is the ThinkPad X1 Extreme. This is something that I've been looking at for quite some time. I've been considering buying it, but I couldn't really justify it and just didn't really have the budget for it. So how awesome is this? My company sends this to me as my new work laptop. I mean, my company rocks and they sent me this X1 Extreme to use for my day to day and it's a great laptop. So while this is a work laptop, I did wanna basically give you guys my thoughts on it because yes, I am running Linux on it. So this is a Linux users review of the X1 Extreme. So I thought maybe this might be beneficial to you guys. Now on my channel, I have reviewed the System76 Darter Pro. So uh, go ahead and check out that review if you haven't already. Now I am gonna make some comparisons to that, but it's not gonna be one-to-one -one because you know the System76 Darter Pro is not a gaming laptop. This one does have a gaming card on it. I'll get into that in a moment. I will show you some gaming footage from it. But there's gonna be some comparisons that I'm gonna make between the two. So check out that video if you'd like to. All right, so a little bit more about this laptop. Again, it's the X1 Extreme from Lenovo. And it has a gaming card, more on that in a moment. This one has a Intel Core i7-8850H processor. And it has a clock speed of about 2.6 gigahertz, which is great. And it actually has six cores, which shows up as 12 when you look at the uh, CPU info from within the computer. Now, obviously this thing ships with Windows on it and uh, you know, System76, they ship with Linux. So I always recommend System76 for Linux users because you know, if you're gonna be running Linux, you should be running that on a supported system. But sometimes your preferred laptop may not necessarily be the one that a Linux vendor is uh, shipping you. And I've been looking at this one for a while and I'm really glad to see that my company, you know, they sent it to me, so that's awesome. But I was looking into it because I was always considering the fact, you know, could I be down to just one machine? I have a desktop, several laptops, a desktop I use for gaming, and then this one has a gaming card. I mean, does a gaming performance, is that enough for me? Could I be down to one machine? Can I dock it? and undock it very easily, um, preferably with one cable, so I don't have a bunch of cables dangling all over my desk if I wanted to use it as my primary machine. And how's the performance? So those are the things that I was looking into when I was preparing for this review. But before we get into that, I'm gonna show off the hardware. All right, so I'm gonna try to zoom into the laptop here. And first thing I'll mention, you know, here's the screen. It is a glossy screen, so it's gonna be kind of hard for me to get into frame. It's a 4K panel. It is a touch screen, so I don't know if you can see my mouse movements here, but it basically does recognize that. And I think it's a beautiful screen. It's very bright and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. And then the keyboard is especially great. It's a ThinkPad keyboard, so it's almost always gonna be great. I don't think I've ever used a ThinkPad keyboard that wasn't. And it has some really good key travel. So I'll just press a few keys here and you can kind of see, um, hopefully that shows up in the video. There is a fair amount of key travel here and the keys are you know, a pleasure to type on. Um, so I like the keyboard quite a bit. We do have this annoying little nub here. I know a lot of people love it, so you know, I'm not trying to talk negative about it in general because I know a lot of people enjoy that and the reason why it's here is because a lot of people like that but I'm not one of them, so it's just one of those things that I wish wasn't there. But you know, it is there. Um, I don't really notice it though. It doesn't really get in the way, so I actually completely forget it's there. But other than that, this keyboard is really good. It's one of my favorites. Actually, it, it feels pretty much identical to my T480S, so it already feels very familiar to me. Now we do have this really annoying logo right here. I don't know what this is. It kind of looks like a, a rectangle that's misshapen with a little cross in front of it, not sure, but I don't know why that's there. Anyway, um, we have the touchpad, obviously, so it's very, very smooth. I love this touchpad quite a bit. Maybe not as much as the Darter Pro that I reviewed recently, but one thing I don't like about it is that the buttons are up here at the top. We have the middle, left, and right. And the reason that's there is because of this, you know, because of the nub, if you're using this, you're gonna, you know, have your fingers down here on the left and right mouse button. So I understand why it's there. I prefer to have mine on the bottom, but actually it kind of already is like that because you can actually press down on the trackpad on either side. It's actually the same as a click. 
And that's what I use, that's how I use it. I have tap to click disable because I don't like that. Actually, no, I guess I did forget to disable on this machine. Anyway, I have tap to click disabled most of the time and I, I'm just used to pressing the physical buttons and I prefer that personally. So over here we have, of course, the ThinkPad logo and then we have the fingerprint reader here and then the power button. Now I haven't tried the fingerprint reader yet. I don't think that works in Linux. I'm not sure. I just haven't had a chance to do any research. So I'll just go ahead and zoom out a little bit here so you get a bigger overall view of the machine. Now to show you the ports, we have the power connector right here. See if I can actually get that centered. Yep. So there's the power connector. Then we have a couple of Thunderbolt ports here. You can charge via Thunderbolt, which is great, but you have this port that's dedicated for that purpose, and the charger you get, here it is right here, here's the end, and it just, of course, plugs in right there, and then you get the uh, charging indicator light that'll illuminate when it has power, but you can also charge it via USB-C slash Thunderbolt as well, but you know, depending on what kind of power cord you have, you may not even charge the laptop enough because the power draw of this machine is going to be more than your standard laptop, especially with a gaming card. Now, I'm using a Thunderbolt 3 dock, which does charge it enough. It has like a 230 watt power supply, I think. I don't quite remember. Something like that. It definitely keeps up with it. Right here, we have the HDMI port. And then here we have the port you would use to plug in a dongle for Ethernet. And then we have your headphone jack right here. So flipping it over to the other side, we have what I assume is a some sort of card reader. I've never used that. But then we have an SD card reader, which works well for me, especially I'm re recording videos, so I need to put my SD card in there, and it's good not to have to use an adapter. And then we have a couple of USB 3 ports there, and then the Kensington lock. We have the hinge, which basically takes the majority of the back of the machine. So if I flip it over, we have the vent down below, so you can see it looks like we have two fans. I'm not going to take this one apart. This is a work laptop, but effectively, you know, you get the idea. You have your ventilation right here. And you could probably tell, but there's a lot of fingerprints on this thing. As I touch the machine, it just attracts fingerprints, and I, I absolutely hate that. I just don't like seeing a bunch of fingerprints on this machine. It looks dirty, but there's really nothing I could do it's, you know, um, a problem. Now, over here on the front, you can basically see the same thing. I got fingerprints all over, but down here at the left, bottom left, actually the bottom right, is the X1 logo, ThinkPad logo here with the, um, the period above the eye right there illuminates. It's basically um, in standby right now, so that's pulsating. So I'll go, I guess I'll go ahead and zoom out. And my opinion of this machine is that it's very, very durable. I mean, it doesn't flex at all, um, not one bit. It, it is solid and a bit heavy. It's heavier than the Darter Pro that I recently reviewed, which is also a 15.6 inch laptop. But this is, you know, it, like I said, it has a gaming card and it has some um, uh, more powerful hardware in here. So that's to be expected. All right, so at this point, I have the HDMI cable plugged in. I'm gonna show you the output from some of the commands in a terminal, and then we're gonna check out some games. So here I am on the laptop itself. What you're seeing is my actual day-to-day -day installation of Pop! OS 1804 that I've customized for my workload. So you, of course you see I have a different wallpaper here. I've made myself at home. Like I said, I've been using this for a while. So this is Pop! OS 1804, one of my favorite distributions. It is my main distribution on most of my machines nowadays. And it's been working really well for me. All the hardware has been basically supported out of the box. So I'm going to open up a terminal, and what I'm going to do is show you some various output from some commands so you could basically see um, how this machine stacks up. So I'll make this terminal full screen. Just to get it out of the way, in, in case the question comes up, which I'm sure it will, in case you haven't seen earlier videos, yes, I do have a unicorn for my bash prompt. You know, um, if you're wondering why that is, I think the better question is, why don't you have that? Everybody should have that. Unicorns are awesome. But that aside, what I'm going to do is show you the output from LSPCI. I think a lot of my viewers will appreciate that. And this will show you some of the components that are installed on this laptop. So right here, you could basically see the information regarding the NVIDIA video card that is included here. But we also have an Intel card as well. 
For the wireless card, we have the wireless AC 9560, and we also have an Intel card for the wired card, the Ethernet card, and here's the model number for that. So if you're curious about the compatibility of any of the components in this machine, feel free to pause the video, and then you can do your own Google searching to see what's compatible and what's not. But in my experience, everything with Pop! OS 1804 does work out of the box. So let's check out the processor info. So let's do cat proc CPU info. I'll scroll up a little bit here. And we can see that we have an Intel Core i7-8850H processor running at 2.6 gigahertz. It can go higher than that though because it does feature Turbo Boost. And we can see here that it actually is a six core processor. So this is a serious processor. It's probably the fastest processor that I have of any of the laptops in my possession. And it feels fast. I really do like this processor quite a bit. Moving on from there. Let's run HTOP. Now I have a bunch of things running here, so you're definitely not seeing idle performance. I'm using 11 gigabytes of RAM, as you can see right here. I have 32, but of course there's some reserved memory. It's not gonna show all the 32 gigs of RAM here, but I have plenty of memory free. And even though I have a six core processor, due to hyper threading, it shows up as 12 uh, cores. So we have 12 virtual cores here. We actually have six physical cores but it shows up as 12 cores. And of course, like I mentioned, I have a lot of stuff going on here. So even though I'm you know, having a lot of things running in the background, this machine is running quite fast. It has not ever slowed down for me yet. So if it can keep up with me, then you know what? I'm pretty happy. All right, so here we are with Doom. This is running from Steam. This is actually running through Proton, as I understand it. So I basically loaded up the game from Steam. Let's go ahead and check it out. And I think the performance is actually decent. You might notice some missed frames here and there. I think that's to be expected because it's basically mirroring this to two screens, the internal laptop screen and also my screen recorder, which for all intents and purposes is another display. It actually is hooked up to a second display. So that's gonna give the graphics card a little bit more work to do than it normally would have. But I think that the game does keep up with me. I do see some slowdown in this game once in a while, but it actually performs just as well as it does on my desktop. And maybe my desktop is slightly better, but I think that this looks really great. And being able to play this game on a laptop comfortably is uh, something I've never done before. So I'm happy to be able to play this game on my laptop and have everything I need from one machine rather than having multiple machines. So here we are with Borderlands 2, one of my favorite games. I actually just started this, so I am pretty much near the beginning. So let me go ahead and load this up. And here I am, again, I'm at the beginning. And I think the game runs fairly well. I don't know what it is about Borderlands 2, but every computer I've ever seen this run on, even a Windows gaming PC, there's just a lot of stutter when you turn, and it doesn't seem very smooth when you are moving around. So I am seeing that problem here on this laptop, but I kind of expected that because I've never really seen this game run very well. I probably should do some research as far as tuning it. I'm sure there's some settings I can configure that'll solve it, but I just haven't had a chance to actually look into that as of yet. But other than the missing frames or the stuttering, whatever you want to call it while you're moving around, I do feel that it runs pretty well on this laptop. And I'm happy to have this game because it is one of my favorites, so I'm glad to be able to play this in Linux and also on a portable laptop. So here I am with Final Fantasy VI, which, let's be honest, this game is totally not going to push the GPU at all. I mean, the fan isn't even on right now, but I have to include this game because it is the best game ever made. I'm willing to defend that. This is actually my favorite game of all time, I'll just say that. And, you know, every computer I run has to at least be able to run this game. And while I don't feel that this is going to push any hardware, this is good gameplay. So every now and then, you know, maybe I'm not in the mood for a highly graphical game. I just want something simple. I'm going to play something like Final Fantasy VI because it is an awesome game. And I'm really thrilled that this works in Steam. So that makes me really happy. 
So there you go. I wanted to run a few games on this machine so you guys could see the gaming performance on it. And I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, but in my opinion, I think it runs very well when it comes to games. And it's actually great to have, you know, a portable device I could take with me and play my games everywhere I go. So I think that's pretty awesome, especially when you consider all my other laptops are all Intel, so they wouldn't even handle anything like Borderlands 2, let alone Doom. So that's pretty awesome. My initial impressions of this machine is that it's pretty awesome. I mean, I'm able to play my games on this machine and get my work done on this machine. I think that it's awesome to be able to do pretty much everything on one machine rather than have multiple machines for varying purposes. I've edited video on this. It handles it very well. Uh, maybe not quite as fast as my desktop, but certainly a lot faster than any of my other laptops. And of course, I play games. You just saw some footage on there. I've had a whole week worth of work at my company to basically get some actual work done on this machine and it totally keeps up with me. It's a fast machine. Um, the only downside I can see right now is the fan. Uh, maybe there's a quick fix for that again. I'll probably do a follow-up video if I could figure out a, an easy way to maybe quiet it down a little bit. And then I also don't like how heavy it is. It's not the heaviest laptop in, in the world, but coming off the Darter Pro review that I did, Maybe that's why it feels a lot heavier to me. Now, in terms of battery life, it's too soon for me to say exactly how much battery life I'm going to get out of this machine. I don't really think I'm gonna have more uh, time on the battery than I would with the Darter Pro, which is basically engineered for that kind of thing. But, you know, I've been using this for work purposes, so primarily I've had it plugged in the entire time. And maybe in a follow-up review, if you guys are interested, I'll do another review and in that video I will mention the battery life to you because I know that's something a lot of you guys are interested in. So I'll make sure that I keep track of that and I'll add that to my next review. And I also like how well Pop! OS runs on here. I've not had a chance to run anything else yet. So I haven't run any other distributions but Pop! OS. And again, I'm running the NVIDIA edition so it's custom tailored for this kind of laptop. And everything works out of the box. I, I mean, I haven't tried the fingerprint reader. That might be one thing that doesn't work. I assume it doesn't because most of the time that kind of thing doesn't work in Linux because a lot of times that's proprietary. But other than that, it's actually been working very well. I've had no issues. I've had no stability issues, hardware compatibility issues, basically none of that. So I really think that this is a great machine and I'm gonna keep using it. Um, I'm gonna use it every day basically. So. I will let you guys know in a follow-up video when I get a chance to record one uh, how the battery life is and if my opinions of this machine has changed over time and then I'll give you guys the update then. So with that out of the way, that was my first impressions video of the ThinkPad X1 Extreme. I hope you like that. Stay tuned for more hardware reviews coming up. I have another laptop that I'm trying to get my hands on, so hopefully I do. And if I'm successful, I'll be able to bring you guys a pretty exciting review here coming up. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.